Last year, astronomers announced that they had, at least for the most part, firmly established the cause of fast radio bursts and where these bursts originate from. They tracked one particular fast radio burst to a magnetar, an extremely active neutron star that at least occasionally pulses out enormously powerful bursts of radio energy. So powerful that we can pick it up at distances of billions of light years. Years. So powerful that if we tried to create the same thing here on Earth, it would require several times the entire power output of human civilization. This, of course, is the main reason that astronomers always discarded the idea that fast radio bursts could be an artificial phenomenon. Why would an alien civilization invest so much energy in communicating with other species billions of light years away who could never answer, at least not in a reasonable time frame? But a recent discovery has thrown the entire scientific community on its head. A radio burst known as FRB 2024-0209A was tracked to a galaxy that should have no fast radio bursts because it has no magnetars. It is an ancient dying galaxy over 11 billion years old, a galaxy where active star formation shut down a long time ago and therefore active neutron stars like magnetars should have also died out a long time ago. And yet, that is not what has happened. And another astronomer has a different idea as to what could be pulsing out this much radio energy on a regular basis in such an ancient galaxy. Over the course of this video, I'm going to be quoting extensively from an article published by Northwestern University. Quote, For the first time, astronomers have traced a fast radio burst to the outskirts of an ancient, dead, elliptical galaxy, an unprecedented home for a phenomenon previously associated with much younger galaxies. Detailed in two complementary studies led by Northwestern University and McGill University, the discovery shatters assumptions that FRBs solely emanate from regions of active star formation. The new observational evidence instead hints that the origins of these mysterious cosmic events might be more diverse than previously thought. Quote, the prevailing theory is that FRBs come from magnetars formed through core collapse supernova, said Northwestern's Tarena Eftekari, who led one of the studies and co-authored the other. That doesn't appear to be the case here. While young, massive stars end their lives as core collapse supernova, we don't see any evidence of young stars in this galaxy. Thanks to this new discovery, a picture is emerging that shows not all fast radio bursts come from young stars. Maybe there is a subpopulation of FRBs that are associated with older systems. Or maybe, just maybe, according to some astronomers, these are actually originating from an artificial source, or at least some fast radio bursts originate from this source. The alien megastructure concept that you're looking at right now is a structure twice the size of the Earth, roughly, covered in solar collectors that collects all of the solar energy that strikes it. Dr. Avi Loeb has hypothesized that a structure like this could generate enough energy to create an artificial fast radio burst that could fool us into thinking that it's the same sort of FRB that we have observed coming from magnetars. And this may indeed be the case, but why would aliens build a structure like this? What purpose could it possibly serve? Well, before we get to that, let's talk about the host galaxy of this fast radio burst. After the team pinpointed the FRB's position, Eftikari and her collaborators hurried to use telescopes at the WM Keck and Gemini observatories to explore the event's surrounding environment. In a specialized room on the Evanston campus, Northwestern astronomers have access to Keck, which enables them to quickly observe phenomena of high interest. And instead of finding a young galaxy as they expected, these observations surprisingly revealed that the FRB originated at the edge of an 
billion-year-old neighboring galaxy located about 2 billion light years from Earth. This may sound like an enormous distance, by the way, but we have detected many other fast radio bursts that originate from even further away. To learn about this unusual host galaxy, the team used high-performance computers to run simulations and found that the galaxy is extremely luminous and extremely massive, 100 billion times the mass of our Sun. This is a bit unusual when we're talking about mass because even though our own galaxy has at least 100 billion stars, the vast majority of those stars are red dwarfs, which are far less massive than our sun. A galaxy with 100 billion times the mass of our sun is indeed enormous and with many, many stars. It seems to be the most massive FRB host galaxy to date, Eftakari said. It's among some of the most massive of galaxies in the universe. But while most FRBs originate well within their galaxies, the team traced FRB 2024-0209A, and yeah, you need to get used to that sort of thing when you're talking about distant astronomical phenomena. Well, they traced this to the outskirts of its home, 130,000 light years from the galaxy's center where few other stars exist. Again, a highly unlikely place for a magnetar to exist even in a young galaxy. Quote, among the FRB population, this FRB is located the furthest from the center of its host galaxy. This is according to Vishwangi Shah, a graduate student at McGill University who led the effort to pinpoint this FRB's origins. This is both surprising and exciting as FRBs are expected to originate inside galaxies, often in star-forming regions. The location of this FRB is so far outside its host galaxy, it raises raises questions as to how such energetic events can occur in regions where no new stars are forming. Before this discovery, there had been only one other fast radio burst that had been traced to the fringes of a galaxy, and this was from a tight cluster of stars on the edge of this galaxy M81, which is about 12 million light years from Earth, much, much closer. And although FRB 2024-0209A occurred in an elliptical galaxy, the two events share several other similarities. Quote, A few years ago, the M81 FRB was surprisingly discovered within a dense cluster of stars called a globular cluster. That event single-handedly halted the conventional train of thought and made us explore other progenitor scenarios for FRBs. Since then, no FRB had been seen like it leading us to believe that it was a one-off discovery until now. So what are some of the explanations? Well, some of the explanations that have been presented by astronomers is very unlikely indeed. First of all, in globular clusters, the idea is that two neutron stars might merge or have a white dwarf collapsing under its own gravity, producing a massive burst of radio energy. Unfortunately, there is no model no explanation, no theory even to explain how such a merger would create a repeating fast radio burst with 22 bursts of radio energy on a regular basis over a sustained time period. A merger like this should produce a blast of radio energy once. But in 2017, astronomers Manasvi Lingham and Abraham Loeb produced another explanation for fast radio bursts. An audacious paper that, by the way, was peer-reviewed and published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters entitled Fast Radio Bursts from Extragalactic Light Sails. Quote, we examine the possibility that fast radio bursts originate from the activity of extragalactic civilizations. Our analysis shows that beams used for powering large light sails could yield parameters that are consistent with fast radio bursts. The characteristic diameter of the beam emitter is estimated through a combination of energetic and engineering constraints, and both approaches intriguingly yield a similar result that is on the scale of a large rocky planet, in other words, about twice the size of Earth. Moreover, the optimal frequency for powering the light sail, or radio sail action, actually, is shown to be similar to the detected fast radio burst frequency. These 
coincidences, quote unquote, lend some credence to the possibility that FRBs might be artificial in origin. Other relevant quantities, such as the characteristic mass of the light sail and the angular velocity of the beam are also derived. So after studying the characteristics of fast radio bursts and crunching some numbers, doctors Lingham and Loeb came to the following conclusions. If this is the product of an extragalactic civilization, this is what it might look like. Instead of just being a very brief burst of radio energy, which by the way, outshines the entire power output of the sun, we're talking a lot of energy here, what we are actually seeing is more of a lighthouse-like beam of radio energy that only briefly passes in front of our point of reference. So it's an ongoing radio beam that is providing propulsion for a very, very large interstellar spacecraft. How large? Well, again, doctors Lingham and Loeb crunched some numbers and determined that a radio beam with the kind of power that an FRB signal would suggest would be capable of pushing a 1 million metric ton spacecraft up to a speed of 50% of the speed of light. If the spacecraft were lighter, then of course the velocity could be correspondingly higher, perhaps approaching 90 or 95% of the speed of light where relativistic time dilation begins to take place and the passengers age far more slowly than the universe around them. Again, these are just general numbers, but very interesting when you consider the implications here. An ancient and advanced alien civilization would definitely have a need to travel from star to star, especially if we're talking about an ancient galaxy where stars are starting to die out. Indeed, intergalactic travel might become a necessity for civilizations like this as their galaxy begins to die out completely. And if you're traveling at high relativistic speeds, traveling from galaxy to galaxy in a single lifetime suddenly becomes a possibility. And also another very interesting feature is the fact that the frequencies of most fast radio bursts correspond to ideal frequencies to push light sails. If the frequencies were even a little bit different, they would not be quite so ideal for such a useful artificial purpose. Now, of course, no one, not even Dr. Avi Loeb, is suggesting that all fast radio bursts can be explained by artificial causes. It's indeed very possible that magnetars are creating the vast majority of these phenomena, but it's very interesting indeed that this recent discovery has proven that fast radio bursts also come from points of origin that have nothing to do with magnetars, from points of origin that in instead might have a lot to do with ancient civilizations because keep in mind we're talking about a really old galaxy here where very old civilizations might have arisen billions of years ago and developed incredibly advanced technology in the meantime and might have a very compelling reason to travel from one dying star to perhaps a star that has a little bit more life yet or as i said before from galaxy to galaxy but why would we pick up these phenomena all over the universe? Why would such vastly different civilizations and alien life forms develop such similar technology? Well, it could be that all of these civilizations have figured out that this is the best way to travel close to the speed of light. If you're using fission, fusion, or even antimatter drive, you still need to carry an enormous amount of fuel, far more fuel than you have payload, in order to reach speeds anything approaching 50% of the speed of light. Whereas if you're transmitting your propulsion from a source that's twice the size of the Earth and therefore has a correspondingly enormous amount of energy at its disposal, it's a lot easier to push massive payloads up to extreme 
extremely high velocities. As I said before, it may be possible that many civilizations have figured this out and all use similar technology. The best way for us to find out if this is the case is to implement in-depth studies of the star systems where these signals are coming from and to determine whether or not some of the telltale characteristic signs of alien megastructures might exist in these star systems. But unfortunately, the mainstream astronomical and scientific community is not going to do anything like that. If you start talking about these sorts of things, you put your future career as a serious astronomer in great jeopardy. The only reason that Dr. Loeb has survived all of this, although he's been the subject to withering criticism as of late, is because he was a highly respected astronomer before he started talking about aliens. A new emerging astronomer just having recently graduated would absolutely be committing professional suicide if they started talking about aliens. And it is this prejudice that makes the search for extraterrestrial civilizations a very difficult task to begin with that much more difficult thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and also please support digital voodoo who created all the music and the incredible animations for this video head over to his youtube channel and please subscribe i've got it listed in the description also please consider supporting this channel on patreon and until next time stay angry about space